Hello, phenomenal people. How are you? Have you guys missed me? I missed you. I've been on vacation for a while, but I'm back. Yay, I'm back. And I'm back with a vengeance. I'm back here with Mr. Tom Roth. Tom Roth is the president and CEO of Roth and Associates. He specializes in financial management services, but he'll tell you more of what he specializes in. And he's also a government contractor. So I want you guys to welcome Mr. Tom Roth to the show. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Latanya. I do not hear any applause, so <laughs> well, we'll, I'm assuming they're, they're saying yay, yay, <laughs> woo. Okay. Okay, well, I'll tell you a little bit about Rumpf and Associates. Um, we do some financial management, but basically we get things done. And with our customers, they see us as a go-to company. Um, we have 85 people in about 40 countries. Wow. So we do a lot of things all over the place. Wow. Awesome. So when you say you have a lot of people all over the place in, in all these various countries, um, what type of countries are you embedded in? Um, I'll just talk about the one that's top of mind because we had an issue there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a transportation contract in Sierra Leone. Mm. And what we're doing is helping the CDC's response to the Ebola virus. Okay. So we have... Um, the Ebola. Ebola. <laughs> <laughs> so um, basically we have a couple of dispatchers there and we have about 30 drivers Okay. And they all they have their own vehicles, and so we manage dispatching the uh, CDC personnel all over the country. Okay. So. Well, well, let me tell you guys a little bit about my my history with Mr. Tom Rumpf. So I met Tom Rumpf at a at a uh, local university here. We were both consultants, and his background was actually you know in commercial. Um, he worked at the Coca Cola um, company, and. Um, but, you know, I saw him doing some of the financial um, government contracting things, and I assumed that that's the field that he was in. Um, he's very savvy, knew about it. And so I, I went to him and I said, do you do government contracts? And he said, no, don't do government contracts. And I said, you know, me being the government contract guru, I said, you should consider doing government contracts. And so I guess along the way, down the line, you know, he's now gotten into it. So I wanted to tell you about your his journey of coming from the commercial world to government contracts. Okay. Well, as LaTanya hinted at, she was deeply involved in that. Um, uh, sometimes you have to listen to little small voices and take little hints. Hmm. Um, I mentioned to LaTanya that I had a friend of mine that I went to college with that worked at the CDC, and he had been um, – basically pressing me about going into government contracting also. And I remember one day I was walking into, because uh, LaTanya and I worked together, she mentioned, mm -hmm. I was walking into the office on the phone, I was talking with him. Mm -hmm. And I hung up and I mentioned to her, hey, that's my friend from the CDC. And she got on my case about <laughs> why don't you call him back right now and ask him to introduce you in. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And then she also mentioned to me that I should go ahead and get my 8A certification. So at the time, I called him back, and this was in July. Um, and actually, in July, I started the process to get my 8A certification. Mm -hmm. And so from there, it just took a life of his own. He introduced us. Uh, my friend introduced us into someone, a contracting officer at the CDC, and um, we had a conversation with him, um, convinced him that we could get things done. Mm -hmm. And um, the only way... You know, from the way I look at government contracting, this is something, LaTanya, you impressed on me. The only way you evaluate it is how you execute against the contract. Absolutely. Absolutely. So were you a little bit, you know, coming from the commercial world going into government contracting, did they give you a little bit pause? Were you a little bit nervous about that? Well, it's hard to get nervous when you don't understand anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Now, that's a nugget for you guys out there, okay? You know, my motto is feel the fear and do it anyway. But, you know, if you don't have any of it, just do it anyway. But anyway, go well, ahead. The interesting thing, um, the commercial world and the government world are a whole lot alike. It's just a different language. Right. And it's like um, you can look at English and Spanish. And we are still looking at the same thing, but we call it something different. Right. And the government world is like that. So you have to really get an understanding of that and an understanding of the rules that they operate by. Right, right. Um, so 
So once you got into um, the government contracting arena, um, would you say that that has been something that you've enjoyed or has it been uh, more of a tedious process versus the commercial world? It's actually more fulfilling than the commercial world. I and, love that. Well, the reason why <laughs> is that um, you can effect change. Mm. And in a large corporation, even one as great as the Coca-Cola company, it's extremely difficult to do that. Wow. Wow. Effecting change. That's that's really good. So so when you say you can affect change, in what ways um, have you affected change versus what you would have been able to do in the, the commercial world? Well, and, and not everyone is the CEO of their own company. That's right. So, but we aspire to be. Yes. <laughs> well, um, the first thing, and really I think this applies across the board, um, when you're running your own company, you can decide what you want to be, and then you can be that. Mm. That's not always what you can do in the corporate world because you have to uh, – corporate is just that. You're doing things together, and you have a lot of people to be together with. Mm. And somebody has to be in charge. They have to have a, a very disciplined structure. Those things apply in the small business world, too, but you have fewer people to do it with in the small business world. And also, you have um, – you know, you have a power over what kind of culture you're trying to create. Right. So um, I can. So if you can affect change on an organization, and then you can take that organization and make revenues and profits and things like that, then you have profits to do things with. That's awesome. And you can affect and affect people the way that you'd like to. And so you know, you can pick team and partners and say, okay. You know, if I got a big contract and I got somebody I want to team with and somebody that I want to help maybe make rich, I can do that. Mm. I can't make someone rich at the Coca-Cola company. Mm. That's so. good. That's good. Now, that was good. Now, we're, we're going to go on break, but after the break, we're going to talk about that because I think that that involves strategy. So when you're talking about teaming and, and having people involved, I think that's a lot of uh, strategic moves that you have to make and so after we come from break you're going to talk to them about how you pick your team what you know what makes a good teaming partner things like that um so guys this is tom roth and this is your girl tanya jones and you can find me on facebook at phenomenon also follow me on periscope at tanya phenom and guess what when i come back we're gonna feel the fear and do it anyway talk to you soon Phenomenon with Tanya will be back right after this. Validar, Flames of Camelot, is the first installment of an epic trilogy that follows the exploits of this mythical warrior as he journeys through time and space. Available at TatePublishing.com Hi, this is Chance Glenn. The best way to support the show is to buy from Amazon.com through our website at MorningBirdMedia.com. Everyone buys online these days, from school supplies to Christmas gifts, and everyone buys from Amazon.com. You can help us by clicking on the Amazon button on our webpage, then shopping as you normally do. There's no additional cost to do this, but a part of what you purchase goes towards helping the show. With it, we can keep this content coming the way you like it at MorningBirdMedia.com. Make your next event, workshop, or conference more powerful with improved networking for attendees and more useful analytics about those in attendance using Confab Analytics' new professional networking environment. Sign your event up with Confab Analytics and tailor our networking environment to suit your specific event. Your attendees simply download our free Confab app to their mobile device. Through the app, they are able to check in without waiting in line and can share key information electronically with fellow attendees. Using your custom Confab event portal, you can view and store analytics about your attendees, as well as send to them individually or as a group up-to-date information about everything going on at your event. They'll always know where the best networking opportunities are. By using Confab Analytics' professional networking environment, your attendees will have a better experience and be more likely to tell others about how good your event was. In turn, you'll have more meaningful data about your attendees so you can give them an even better experience next time. Confab maximizes your event by making you and your attendees part of the network and a whole lot more. 
For more information, visit confabanalytics.com or email sales at confabanalytics.com. Confab, connecting the most important part of the network, you. The Morning Bird Media Network at morningbirdmedia.com. Welcome back to Phenomenon. Now, here's Tanya. Well, welcome back. We had an awesome, or should I say, phenomenal conversation during the break. And uh, I told you we were going to talk about strategy and teaming partners and things like that. And the reason I want to talk about that is because that's what leads you to awards. You know, awards are a big deal. You know, um, I went to an awards day ceremony today for my daughter in the third grade. And uh, I, I don't think she thought it was a big deal. You know, she got a perfect attendance award and, and, and completion. And t- I'm like, where's the uh, straight A award? I, I need to get some straight A awards. So Tom Ruff is going to talk to you about how you get those straight A awards and, and if a teaming partner can help you with that. So talk to them a little bit about that. Well, in the business world, actually, the the um, more important awards are the showing up every day uh-huh. and well, showing up every day and doing what Danielle you do that. every day. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, is that straight A's kind of reflect in genius, and genius comes in short supply. Hmm. So you make your company really moves forward by the people that are there every day and that buy into what you're doing and have a high level of integrity. That's how you make money. And if you think the Coca-Cola company or any of these other high-level companies are full of geniuses, uh, no. (laughs) No. And then it gets into, as you're talking about vetting teaming partners and so on and so forth, um, one of the things that I found, at least what we apply, is the first thing I'm going to do is sit down across the table from you mm-hmm. and look into your eyes and make sure as we were talking, you know, I get a feeling about your integrity, your values, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that are most important because mm-hmm. government contracting and really any other things that you do, they have nothing to do with, um, they have nothing to do with, um, um, I'm sorry, I lost my. <laughs> With our technician, media manager, we're trying to take a picture, being lost all. I lost my trade of thought. Basically, you need to get us back to team and partners and, and how you vet them and you look them in the eyes. And okay, whatever. yeah, yeah, and, and exactly. Because um, at the end of the day, they're going to have to bring the integrity and discipline right. to discipline. this thing. Yeah. And the things, the characteristics that cause teaming partnerships to fail are a lack of discipline and normally Mm -hmm. you probably see a lot of teams that include a big company and a small company right right the big company brings the discipline and forces that onto the small company and so that tends to be the the attributes that make the partnership work well right so what we do is we're a small business we're going to bring that discipline and we're going to demand expect the same of our team and partners and if they come in undisciplined, we most likely will not do business with them. Mm-hmm. And because discipline. You must have discipline. Because the only way you're going to execute is with discipline. And so you have to ask me, what does discipline mean to me? What does discipline mean to you? It's only one thing. Exposing reality and acting on it in the same manner whenever you see it. So if you see a certain kind of reality, you do you deal with it and address it. The same way every time, hmm. as opposed to we're going to make up something new every time we run into that situation. That's good. That's and, good. And I'll give you my favorite math equation. Okay. Vision. I'm not good with math. Well, no, this is easy. <laughs> it's more like algebra. It's, uh, well, it's not algebra. Good in algebra. Well, vision plus execution equals results. That ain't math. That's some, that's some long contract words. Or well, stuff. vision without execution is just a hallucination Ooh. it's true because all you're sitting around there is just you're, you're thinking about something and you have without the execution you have really no intentions of doing anything about it and so you will not achieve results but you have a hallucination because you think about something that's got no real chance of ever happening so you hallucinate. That's good. That's and good. we don't deal with people that hallucinate. hallucinate. That's good. And, you know, you and execution, again, it's about that reality thing. It's about exposing reality and reacting to it. So the discipline that you bring will make sure that your execution is the same thing every time. That is awesome. That it's, is 
simple. <laughs> that is it's simple. I, actually, you know, I always talk to my audience. I always throw in a little biblical, you know, thing in there. You know, and the Bible talks about writing the vision and making it plain. But it goes on to say that so men can run with it. So that's your execution part. So, so when you have a vision, then people can understand what that is. And if you display that vision all the time, basically what you're saying consistently, then Execute. you can have somebody that that's really, really good. Now, now guys, you know, I know a lot of you guys don't, don't know a lot about government contracts, but what I want to tell you is that, um, there is a program it's, it's called the 8A program. And, um, you, you can get awarded up to $4 million sole source. So what that means is not that they just give it to you. You have to do something for it. And Tom's going to tell you what you have to do for it. But also it's not just you, you got to find somebody that's, that's, Competitive. You've got to be two or more people that's competing in that area. That so, so you're going to have competition. But if you have a relationship, and Tom's going to talk to you about how to get to that, then you can get an award up to four million dollars without having to really compete with the big boys. So, so let's talk about that a little well, bit. Let's talk about it from a context that they will understand. Okay. Say if you were going to buy a car. Mm-hmm. Now, how many of you would just go to one dealership and pay whatever price that they gave you? Mm-hmm. I ain't doing that. The only way you would do that is if it was your mother or somebody you trusted right. that was the salesperson. Right. So you're asking the government to come and give you a contract without going to anybody else. Mm. They got to know and trust you. Right. right. And if they do that and they believe they're getting fair value for what they're asking for, then they will go ahead and say, okay, I'll just go to this one person. But you got to justify that. Hmm. And you, and when I say justify, you show yourself self worthy of that. You have discipline. Mm -hmm. They know that whenever you do a proposal, you got a solid process that you're following, and your pricing is solid. And they say, okay, I know how they're doing this. Hmm. And so if they know how you're doing it, they can trust what comes out of the other side. Right. And so you know they know that okay, he has a vision that he wants this four million dollar contract. And he's got the ability to execute against that. So he's going to deliver the results that I'm looking for. Vision plus execution equals results. results. If they can see that in you, they will sole source the contract to you. Then as you get some sole sources, then you start building your company's muscles and capabilities up so you can go after bigger and better things. The 8A program has a nine-year shelf life. That's right. The day that you get in it, you got to be planning for the day that you get out of That's it. That's right. And hopefully you get out on it, get out of it on Earth. your own terms. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I like to um, say that you make sure you finish with the 8A program as opposed to running out of time. Right. That's and and that's what I'm saying. I mean, the 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 year mark is 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 good, but if you make a certain amount of money, you automatically graduate out of that program. Um, and so you were talking about, you know, going to the dealership and things like that. And I thought about relationship. So how important is relationships as it relates to getting these awards? It's the main thing. Mm -hmm. Now, um, how do you build relationships yeah. with people in your world? Right. You build relationships by building trust and you get trust by them doing things over and over. And you say, OK. I trust that they can do things. I trust that I know how they think and how they believe and how, you know, the things that they believe in. And I know how they feel about me so I can turn my back. And if I have my back turned, I know what they're going to do. Hmm. And the government is the same way. So and the government is made up of people. Mm -hmm. You have contracting officers. You have program managers. Mm -hmm. Those are the key people. And, you know, I'm going to talk about those two. The contracting officers are the only people that can sign a contract. That's right. So you guys, I was a contracting officer, so. And they <laughs> they tend to, when you when you have, like, I'll use the example of buying a car. Mm -hmm. When you go buy the car, you have the salesman, and then once you the salesman gets the okay, he sends you in the back to handle the business That's arrangements. Right. That's right. So the program person is kind of the salesperson in that analogy, and the contracts person is the business person. Right. So the business person has to have a belief that, this money is going to go to a good place and it's going to do good there. And they typically have some level of influence over the program manager. And that's so I would maybe, you know, think about it like that. 
Mm. And so, um, but you need to convince the program people also. Right. But but the contracts people are key. Right. Now, most of the time, if the program person doesn't have someone and the contracts person makes the recommendation, the program person will go along with it. Right. If the program person has someone and, and the contract person the contract. doesn't like you, it's you going to going stop. To. <laughs> yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, I think this is really, really a good conversation. And so what would you tell somebody? So, guys, let me stop right here and tell you. The government buys anything from pencils, pens, um, anything. So what would you tell somebody that says, hey, you know, I'm – you know, I'm in the commercial world. I've heard a lot about government contracting. You know, is this the right thing for me? Is it the wrong thing for me? What would be your advice to that particular person? Um, well, I heard your theme, and excuse me if I don't get it right, but it's kind of, you know, move on in spite of the fear. It's feel the fear and feel do, the it fear anyway. do it anyway. <laughs> okay, is that. Well, um, the biggest thing that I learned is that um, when I became CEO, I had no experience at doing it. I did not know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of the times when we put ourselves in the CEO role, we say we are in charge and mm -hmm. I know all and be all. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing you got to realize is that you can surround yourself with a whole bunch of people. They'll know what they're doing. You don't. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be humble enough to deal with that. That's if you good. can start with from that perspective, everything else will flow. Right. Because the only way you're going to get people to reach out and show you how to do things, which is what the main help you're going to need, is to show yourself open to receiving. That's, wow. And so, as you mentioned before, I got a lot of help from you. Mm -hmm. The only reason you told me that is I showed myself open to learn. Right. Absolutely. And I learned a lot more from you than you will ever believe. Don't be talking about that on this show trying to make me blush and just talk about something else. Well, no, but, it, but it's the key thing because you're going to have to, you're going to have to hire experts around you or have to have experts around you. Even if you don't have any money to hire them, you have to have people that believe in you and buy into what you're doing. And then you have to listen to them. That's good, Tom. That's good. Surrounding yourself around people um, that are smarter than you. I always try to surround myself around smart people. You know, Tom's, bragging and saying stuff about me but tom is a very strategic person uh, he knows i'm if you guys uh, follow me on facebook you saw my post the other day where i said i had a monkey brain where what's this dude is this one tom has been one that says hey let's slow down you know let's talk about what the strategy is and so i surround myself around a lot of people that slow me down so um i think he will be a good uh, person for anybody that's out there. I mean, he's open to answering any questions. So um, tell them how they can reach you. Okay. Well, the easiest thing is to contact me through our website, mm -hmm. and that's www.rumpfandassociates.com. Okay. Rumpf is R U M P H, and is spelled out. Associates has an S. dot com. Great. Awesome. Awesome. So, is there anything else you want to talk about or, or reiterate and? Nah, right. I think that's enough for now. Well, this was great. This is this is my lane. Um, this is a guy that I admire, um, and this guy has, like he said, he has he has built his company from um, from a world that he knew from a commercial world. He used that knowledge and created something in the government contracting world, which a lot of people don't do. And so I think you guys need to, you know, listen. You need advice. He's there. He's out of the country a lot, though, getting that Ebola and stuff like that. But anyway, so if you guys want to, if you guys miss any of this, you can contact me on Facebook at Phenomenon. You can also email me at Phenomenon at MorningBirdMedia.com. You can also follow me on Periscope at Tanya Phenom. And guess what? Feel the fear and do it anyway. Talk to you soon. Bye. This has been Phenomenon with Tanya. To learn more about the show, visit MorningBirdMedia.com or you can email at Phenomenon at MorningBirdMedia.com. Also, check out Facebook under Phenomenon. Come back and join Tanya as she helps you feel the fear and do it anyway.